This is what renowned American physicist Mr. Kaku had said about two years ago. Well, that's the problem. The James Webb Space Telescope is upsetting the apple cart. All of a sudden, we realize that we may have to rewrite all the textbooks about the beginning of the universe. Now, it takes many billions of years to create a galaxy, like the Milky Way galaxy, with 100 billion stars, many billions of years old. But the James Webb Telescope has identified six galaxies that exist half a billion years after the Big Bang that are up to 10 times bigger than the Milky Way galaxy. That shouldn't happen. There should not be primordial galaxies that are bigger than the Milky Way galaxy that are only half a billion years old. Something is wrong. We may have to revise our theory of the creation of the universe. More than two years after the successful launch of the James Webb Space Telescope, Astronomers are now enjoying a fruitful period of discovery as the telescope pushes the limits on what we can see. But the discoveries have also opened a Pandora's box of conundrums for cosmologists. Recently, the telescope's observations once again entered the first 500 million years after the Big Bang. And this time it observed galaxies that are most definitely anything but infantile, as in they are extremely massive and mature than previously expected for such early times. And now, Astronomers are staring at a galaxy that could be one of the oldest ever. And the shocking part is that it already contains billions of stars. Interestingly, only two years ago, the Hubble Space Telescope spotted this cosmic giant as an unusual point of light in its field of view. Scientists couldn't have imagined that this odd speck of light is a monstrous galaxy lurking at the edge of time until they turned Webb to look at it. Webb's observations revealed that what seemed like a single point of light is actually a massive primordial galaxy far more developed than expected. Named GZ9P3, this galaxy exists at a redshift of 9.3, meaning we are seeing it as it was just 510 million years after the Big Bang. While other galaxies from 300 to 500 million years post-Big Bang have been observed, none match the sheer mass of this one. To reach its current size, the stars in GZ9P3 must have formed faster and more efficiently than previously believed. But its unusual shape also hints at deeper cosmic secrets. Researchers found two bright patches within the galaxy evidence of a galactic merger in the early universe, where two ancient galaxies collided and combined. Using JWST, scientists also detected silicon, carbon, and iron in GZ9P3's older stars, elements produced by stellar explosions that enriched the young universe with metals. Surprisingly, the galaxy contains more old stars than expected, suggesting that galaxies matured chemically and structurally much faster than current models predict. These discoveries challenge our understanding of early galaxy formation, hinting that galactic mergers were more common and that the process of star formation happened at a far greater pace than once believed. While the overall cosmological model remains intact, our perception of how quickly galaxies evolved may need a serious update. Even though we have built our cosmological model based on observations and theories and mathematics supporting those theories, there are a few clues that the universe isn't completely adding up. You may have heard about the crisis in cosmology. Well, basically the crisis originated when different methods of measuring the age of the universe started giving different results and still do, and cosmologists have no idea why. The James Webb Space Telescope, with its recent discoveries, has worsened the crisis even more. The universe is expanding and distant galaxies are moving farther away from us. When we calculate the rate of the expansion of the universe using the cosmic microwave background, which is the light left over from when the universe was only 380,000 years old, this is what we get. Then there's another method where we know how bright distant supernovas are supposed to be, and we can compare that to how bright they appear when we measure them. We can then use that information to estimate the expansion rate of the universe at the time of the supernova. When we calculate the expansion rate using this method, also called standard candles, this is what we get. So, the expansion rate of the universe is called the Hubble constant. However, the difference between result of the two methods is called the Hubble tension. And this, my friends, is the crisis in cosmology. But this is not the only crisis anymore. 
A recent cosmological distress has emerged that challenges our models like never before. I spent all my life developing a particular uh, theory of the universe, and now that theory is being questioned. I welcome that, because that's how we move forward. That's how we make progress in science. When you look up in the sky, given you are not in a city or place obstructing starlight, you see countless stars. You also see the Andromeda galaxy as a smudge amidst the many stars. That's because the universe is filled with stars and galaxies. The question is, how much of the universe do they fill? In other words, how much matter is actually there? A simple question, the answer to which is anything but simple. This dilemma exists largely because current cosmological observations simply disagree on how matter is distributed in the present-day universe. And this has given rise to the mysterious S8 tension, aka the new cosmological distress. Now the S8 tension is a measure of the lumpiness or clustering of matter in the universe. To put it simply, Picture the universe as this colossal puzzle, where the pieces of the matter scattered throughout space. Scientists want to understand how this matter is distributed and how it clumps together. There are two ways to measure it. First, by precisely calculating it by using low redshift observations, such as weak gravitational lensing. Gravitational lensing is a phenomenon where the immense gravitational pull of massive objects like black holes and galaxies act as cosmic magnifying glasses, bending and distorting the light from more distant objects that would otherwise be invisible, providing unique insights into the vast universe. However, the S8 value derived from the second method, which is the standard model of cosmology based on cosmic microwave background measurements, does not align with values obtained from low redshift observations. This discrepancy forms the perplexing heart of the S8 tension. Now what do we do? Clearly there is something that we do not understand at all. Something that isn't quite adding up, despite the countless theories and observations and hypothetical entities supporting those theories. What's really happening? To uncover the mystery, astronomers turned to one of the world's most powerful supercomputers to conduct the largest cosmological simulations ever attempted. The sheer scale of this project is unimaginable. It required over 50 million hours of computing time, spread across 30,000 processors within the Drac Cosma 8 supercomputer at Durham University, UK. This massive endeavor, known as Flamingo, an acronym for Full Hydro Large-Scale Structure Simulations with All Sky Mapping, was designed to interpret next-generation cosmic observations. Unlike previous simulations that primarily focused on dark matter, Flamingo went further by incorporating baryonic matter, which, despite making up only one-fifth of the universe's mass, plays a crucial role in shaping cosmic structures. Ordinary matter influences how galaxies form through effects like galactic winds from supermassive black holes and supernova explosions, which can halt galaxy growth. While past models focused mainly on gravitational interactions, Flamingo's inclusion of normal matter allowed for a more complete picture. Despite these advancements, the simulation failed to resolve a major cosmological puzzle, the S8 tension, which refers to the observed discrepancy in the clumpiness of matter in the universe. While the standard model predicts galaxies should be 7% more clustered than observations suggest, even Flamingo's improved model accounting for supermassive black holes still resulted in a 5% discrepancy. This contradiction aligns with recent findings from the JWST, which confirmed the long-debated Hubble tension, the inconsistency in measurements of the Hubble constant, the universe's expansion rate. The fact that both Webb and Hubble independently report conflicting expansion rates suggests that our current cosmological framework may be incomplete. Some experts now argue that new physics might be required to resolve these growing tensions in our understanding of the universe. With measurement errors ruled out, what remains is the intriguing and exhilarating possibility that we have misconceived the nature of the universe. New theories are already making its way into the limelight, with some calling for the removal of dark matter. What do you guys think? Drop in your comments to let me know. And don't forget to subscribe.